Welcome to Weather Extra on CBS News Bay Area. I'm KPIX 5 meteorologist Paul Hagen. Every week, we're taking a closer look at a weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can do within our daily weather casts on KPIX. In my last Weather Extra segment, part of what I talked about is what meteorological summer, that's June, July, and August, typically brings to the Bay Area. This week, I want to look at how summer is changing across the country and here closer to home. And it's also a good time to go through some heat safety tips. As planet warming gases from fossil fuel burning increase global average temperatures, we are experiencing more extreme heat events, both globally and in the United States. It's no surprise that extreme heat is most apparent in the summer since it's just the hottest time of year. A recent Climate Central study looked at 52 years of summer temperature data since the start of the satellite era in 246 U.S. locations and found that average summer temperatures are rising across the board. 96% of the locations analyzed had an increase in average summer temperature, and over half of those locations warmed by 2 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Summer warming was greatest in the western and southwestern United States. The three greatest increases in average summer temperatures since 1970 were in Reno, Nevada, with a 10.9 degree increase, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Boise, Idaho, both registering more than 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Here in the Bay Area, the increase has been more modest in comparison, but still statistically significant. San Francisco's average summertime temperature has increased by more than 2 degrees Fahrenheit over the last 50 years. We can also look at the number of uh, summer days with above normal temperatures in those same 246 nationwide locations. Since 1970, 81% of those spots had seven or more days in the, above their normal summer temperature, and 37 locations had 30 or more additional days of above normal summer temperatures. San Francisco just missed making that list with an increase of 26 days with above average temperatures. That's almost four weeks worth. Extreme heat is more, though, than just a set of numbers. It is a serious health hazard. Exposure to extreme heat makes it difficult for our bodies to cool off naturally, re resulting in heat-related illnesses, including heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and potentially fatal medical emergencies like heat stroke. There are several key differences in the symptoms of heat exhaustion versus heat stroke. How your head feels, whether or not you're sweating, how your skin feels, and whether or not you lose consciousness. Heat exhaustion can be treated at home with air conditioning, hydration, and a cool shower to reduce the body's temperature. Heat stroke is an emergency and should be treated by medical professionals. From 1979 to 2018, more than 11,000 Americans died from heat-related illness. But in a recent study, researchers concluded that heat-related deaths in the U.S. may be underreported. The number may be substantially larger than previously reported. Summer heat can also exacerbate poor air quality by trapping harmful pollutants close to the Earth's surface and creating ground-level ozone. These pollutants can exacerbate respiratory issues in people with asthma and other lung diseases. We rank the air quality on a five-level scale. The Bay Air Quality Air Management District will issue a spare the air alert when the air quality is forecast to at least reach the orange category. That's unhealthy for sensitive groups. We also have some smoke forecasting tools here at KPIX that we'll utilize throughout the season to help you plan ahead for when wildfire smoke inevitably intrudes into the Bay Area. Thankfully, that hasn't happened yet. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the most vulnerable populations to excessive heat are pregnant women, infants and children, especially young children, adults over the age of 65, and people with chronic medical conditions. Low-income households and outdoor workers are also at a greater risk of health complications due to the heat. The advice during heat waves is always common sense stuff, but it's always worth repeating. Find some air conditioning or at least some shade as often as possible. Reduce your exposure to direct sunlight. Wear loose-fitting, light-colored, lightweight clothing. And most importantly, stay hydrated. It's also important in the summer to get in the habit of checking the back seat for pets and children. When the air temperature reaches 95 degrees, which it frequently does inland during the summer, the temperature inside a car reaches 130 degrees in just 30 minutes. In 2021, 23 children died in hot cars nationwide. One of those was here in California. The data for hot car-related pet deaths isn't as reliable or as extensive, but in 2021, there were at least 59 dogs that died after being left in a hot car. Whatever it takes to remember to check the back seat every time you drive somewhere, do it. Leave your wallet or purse in the back seat if you have to. It only takes one instance of forgetfulness to result in a tragedy. 
Finally, there's one other thing to keep in mind. An air temperature of 95 degrees results in significantly hotter temperatures for outdoor surfaces. Concrete heats up to 125 degrees and asphalt over 140 degrees in those conditions. So just avoid walking your pets in the afternoon when temperatures are at their hottest. Playground equipment also heats up faster than the air temperature, leading to the risk of skin burns for children. For both pet safety and playground safety, just utilize the five-second test. Place your hand on whatever surface you think might be too hot, whether it's a sidewalk, street, or the backyard swing set. If you can't hold your hand there for at least five seconds, it's too hot for puppy paws, it's too hot for your kid's skin. That's it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Darren Peck will be back next week to cover another topic, and we are always looking for new ideas for these segments. If you have a weather or climate question, just email it to us, weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.